This episode of Sewing Out Loud is brought to you by our SewHere.com members. This podcast and our community is mostly funded by the support of listeners like you. If you love the podcast, check out SewHere.com slash membership to see how you can keep it in your ears for years to come and get fun stuff to boot. Welcome to Sewing Out Loud, the official podcast of ZD Sewing Studio. Here are your hosts, ZD and Mallory. Hello, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Mallory Donahue. And I'm ZD Donahue. And we're going to continue our butchering series here, building and butchering. So we thought we'd be able to do bras, shoes, and hats in the same all, episode, all together, but we just but really got off a, on the tangent, on the, bras, on the bra right. tangent, you know. Oh my uh, gosh, and it's 2020 today. Yeah. So well, it's been 2020 in podcast land yeah, for I a know, few weeks now. But for us... <laughs> <laughs> it's our first 2020. It's not the first one you've heard in 2020, but it's the first one. The first recording session. I had to write down 20 in my notes. I see. I see. see. Um, so. Which is good that I did. That is good. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about shoes. Yes. Custom shoes for like whether it's an idea that comes right. out of your brain i mean obviously you can or a make, costume people can make shoes people can make shoes now to have a really durable shoe that you've made i really feel like you have to have a lot of specialized equipment you do and it's fascinating right. i mean something like a house shoe that's different you can sew a house shoe together something that you're not going to wear into the weather so to speak right or the elements like i mean Anybody can wear whatever they want <laughs> in, in the, the rain. Right. No, but I mean they can oh, wear yeah. they can wear whatever they want. They can. I'm talking about durability <laughs> here. <laughs> yes, you're talking about like a real shoe. And actually, right. you know, Russell. Russell Conte. Do yeah. you you know you know what I'm talking about? Um, he. Yeah, I know you're talking. You know about. what I'm talking about? So he, he makes, teaches. He makes metallic shoes. He, and, shoes. and he makes like leather shoes. And he, he makes, makes them all sandals. He teaches making shoes. Yeah. He, so he teaches this in LA um, as part of like the fashion program and his students all make these shoes and they're like a like a men's dress shoe is what right, we're seeing. Right, right. Like it's a leather, an Oxford. Yeah, yes. an Oxford. There, thank you. Thank you. I was like, what is that called? <laughs> I sit down in front of this microphone and forget names like things that I would normally like look up on the internet or something but when we sit down to um, podcast, I forget them. So yeah, he's making like a real shoe with the sole, uh, you know, with a last, with the specialty machine. Has a tongue. Shows it all. It's has, really cool. Has holes for for uh, laces, laces and stuff. all that kind of yes, thing. So that's a, but but okay. If you're gonna and like, he has like forms. Yeah, like there's forms and sizes and what. Well, that's size a last. Is, Okay, yeah, that's okay. what that oh, okay, I think right. that's what that's called. I think you're right. Is that right? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yes, I forgot so, you'd said that. So if you <laughs> buy <laughs> doesn't take long. Yeah, but there you go. Yeah. Well, and the word last you're not used to right. hearing it like, like, like that. that. Um I posted some shoe last Because from... he'll say in the class, we all found our last today. Yes, yes. yes. So everybody figured it out. Uh there were some on Etsy that were like purple. Uh -huh. You know, just, I mean, it doesn't matter what color they are. You mold the shoe to them. You know, it's not like right. the color matters. But I was like, that's what I want. When I, I want a set of hat blocks, too, so I can pull felted hats. Okay. okay. I want shoe lasts. I do want all the specialty machines for <laughs> making shoes. Mm -hmm. Have you followed, okay, really getting off a tangent here, but there is a woman who does fur work. Who um, Rebecca Darling she, and her I know Instagram. The name. Why don't I know? I'm okay. Go well, ahead. she's she's been a member of So yeah. Here, and uh, she her Instagram is Darling Leather and Fur, mm -hmm. and she shows her specialty machines that she uses right. to make those things. So anyway, it's really cool. Okay, but if you're gonna make a costume or you're gonna do something cool to make a shoe that complements right. an outfit, you don't have to start from the ground up, right? No. No. You can butcher a shoe. You can build on a shoe. You can alter a shoe. Yes, absolutely. So this is where you also maybe want to keep some of your old shoes. Old shoes. Shoes from thrift stores. Shoes. Nifty shoes. shoes. People who have like really good shoes that you know that give they them give away them away or yeah. whatever before they send them to the thrift store or uh, whatever. Shoes, or so shoes that are like 
I, you know what happens to shoes a lot that doesn't matter if you're going to recover them is like the heels getting scuffed up. Something. Anything, okay. Yeah. You know, or some, or, you know, yes, yeah, something right. like that. You, you can save those shoes if you think you'll use them for something. I have actually seen people make pin cushions out of shoes. Yes. Like take a, right. you know, a shoe full of, full of stuff and cover it. You, know, you know, you anyway, get a pin yeah. cushion. There. That's not what we're talking about. No, I don't want to do okay. that. Okay. So if you need to make, though, like in, in cosplay land. Exactly. Okay. If you want to make that pair of boots, I'm, I'm thinking – I can think of a few characters that have really characteristic um, shoes, like Glimmer from She-Ra. She has these like moon boot looking right. things, or really any or any like high boot, which normally would be like super expensive. Get yourself a very comfortable tennis shoe, yeah, and proceed. Some faux leather uh, or, or, or vinyl that foam, or, that, foam yep. that they use mm-hmm. a lot in yep. cosplay. It can be, it can really look like leather. That's right. Also. When people make cosplay stuff, they want to sometimes duplicate those exaggerated proportions. It's, yes, they're keeping. They're not. They're because usually it is an exaggerated proportion, so it's not that they're exaggerating it, but they're yeah, they're doing keeping just what you say. The illustration. Yeah, yeah. So you're not making it. You're not paring it down to reality. You're yeah. keeping it like. Unrealistic. Yeah, someone's, someone's <laughs> or fantasy. You're keeping right, it. Yeah, yeah. Fantasy, you're keeping it right. fantasy. Someone's knee high boots, you know, in real life, right? Might not act the way that like a character's knee right. high boots act, and people pay attention to that like how the fabric right. moves and right. stuff, and that's why the foam is so nice because it gives that that's sort of right. illustrative kind of quality. Like you're a walking cartoon. Yes, you, you know? are. You're a walking illustration yes. or caricature or whatever. So that's why the foam can be so nice. And really, where you, I mean, what you start doing, Mom, when you find that comfortable shoe. Is you put it on, right? And you start draping. You start. And you start it's like draping you start, your building. That's whatever right. Whatever you want to call it, there. That's what you can yep. do. Uh, with a shoe, it's nice to start putting uh, that fabric on your. So let's talk about building, like building a boot onto a shoe. Okay, let's okay. let's let's you know go yeah. there. When you start to kind of put it on your foot or the wearer's foot. You can start to see where your seam lines might be, right? And what right? sort of shape you will. So, and it, and you can drape. You can take yeah. something that is sort of drapey mm-hmm. and pinch it up, and like, right? You may be putting a dart there now, but you know that might need to be a seam. That's right. Yes. That's right. So you can, um, you might decide to have a seam that goes up, sort of like the side of the leg, right? The, the side, of, you know, however tall right. your boots are or whatever. Uh, maybe it goes at the side of the calf. Maybe you have a seam at the center front center front of one. the boot. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe you have uh, the top of the foot. Okay. Like, right. uh, you know, where you'd get the sunburn if you were standing. Yes. Okay. At the top of your feet. Maybe that's a piece. The instep. Sort of like, no, your instep's. You know, like the arch of your foot, isn't that? That would be the arch. That's the arch. So that's the instep. Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry. I thought it was. Top of your foot. I don't let know. Me, let me Google that. Oh, is that what you're going to do? Okay. Well, the arch is on the bottom and the I instep guess. is on the yeah. top. I'm no, a, you're I right. might be you're wrong. Right. I don't know. Um, We're experts. Okay. But if you, ha- if you have your comfortable shoe, you can start to drape. And when you figure this out, like mom said, you can kind of use a, quote, muslin fabric. You don't have to be folding up and oh that yep that's that's your instep ball ball of foot all right there we go right so the <laughs> Z, instep ZD showing is the is the is, top of the foot the opposite of the arch oh okay right okay yeah right the arch arches and the instep arches okay but the, the arch is up into the foot and the instep arches out of the foot so to speak all right, right. it's on top good okay. to know so you may find that uh so with your muslin fabric okay you know, maybe you use like a canvas or like a leftover, you know, scraps from something. You can start to drape and cut and kind of, you know, maybe baste with right. pins. So you're making yourself a pattern. Yeah, you're ma- you are making yourself a pattern. And I had to do this in school. We had to make spats. Okay, yes. that's and how I made my first bats. I put my foot down yep, and, and started, started right, draping dra- around, drawing it. pictures. Yeah, now, I was or, really my- stupid. And I made, like, gaiters that went up to my knee. Uh-huh. And the reason I was stupid is because you didn't have to do that, and that made a lot more work. Right. And I put uh-huh. multicolored snaps up the side of them, you know, 
like never have an occasion to wear these at all. Uh, but I, <laughs> it's you not to something get into some I cosplay. need. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well, I kind of. But da- I draped it around my leg. When we talk about cosplay, I think. Weren't we like cosplaying before people were cosplaying? Yeah, we definitely. It was like we were like we we're didn't gonna call it that, and we up. didn't pick. But it was like, I know about this thing, and maybe I could make it because you can't find it any place. And well, we were like make it. Okay, being in like the theater, it's theater. It's kind of like a precursor right. or just a different environment, you right. know, than cosplay, I guess. But you, you know, you said it. I well, think you hit the nail on the head a few episodes ago when you were like, "It's Halloween." And time of year you know well and i think the other thing about cosplay and theater versus cosplay and maybe okay so costuming is this big huge thing right right so you have theater you have the movies you have dance you have all kinds of performance costumes right right so the thing about theater and cosplay i think that makes them sort of close cousins is it doesn't have to re- be the real thing. It only has to mimic it and look it. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't have to be the same weight. It doesn't even mm-hmm. have to be the same material. Right. Like, it doesn't have to be metal. It just has to look like metal. Like metal. Yeah, yeah. Right. Absolutely. Where in the movies, sometimes, you have to, because you yeah, got a closer shot, it may need to be more the real or authentic. Right. Now, some people... Like Rinfest, some Rinfest people want authenticity. Yeah, they'll they'll go for authenticity, that kind of thing. But you know, nobody's using whalebone. Somebody out there is you using whalebone. They're going to email me now. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't Let's know. Go back to it, shoes. So, so what I'm saying, yeah, okay. But this is where shoes come in. Yes. So, uh, you can build upon a shoe. I said it. I said a tennis shoe, a dance shoe, any shoe. Uh, so if you, need, I have built on any kind of shoe. Right, but I if, can't think of one like I haven't. If yeah. you are doing something, let's pretend you're costuming for a dancer, right? Or like you know, for a ballet, right. and somebody needs a special shoe, you can build right onto, on the shoe that they want to have. Yes, yes, yes and uh, make it so it's. They still have all the range of motion and all the grip they need and everything. And a lot of times that's similar to like what you say, a spat. Yeah. Except a lot of times you've attached it. In it. Mm-hmm. When I think about a spat, it's more like something no, yeah. that just lays on top of it's the shoe. It's not attached. Right. It's yeah. not so permanent. So you're going to drape your your fabric on. You're going to draw lines. You're going to cut it out. You're going to kind of put it together. You make a pattern. You know, to dot. Some of the foam out there doesn't have to be like sewn in a traditional manner. You can kind of butt the seams up together and zigzag it, but then some of it out there you can sew like normal fabric, and then it just stands up and right. has a lot of body, so that's great. But the other thing you can do with shoes is you can cover them, and right? Here's where glue comes glue, in. Glue, lots of glue. And this there's, is, we're know, okay with glue here. I even hesitate to say what kind of there are so many glues. yeah you may test out there and see are what works. so many glue you know the glue you use for the paper wigs what was that I 507 can't. okay or it wasn't yeah. e6000 was it had number. an f in it though i think okay but you know there are so many glues and some of them are quicker drying which is a good thing sometimes you know yeah. um quicker drying it strong but you need ventilation and you have to be 21 or 18 to buy them sometimes oh my god <laughs> You know, yes, you um, E6000, E6, I think, is a standard that a lot of people might know about, at least in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, it does take some drying time. Uh-huh. And again, Mallory's mentioned this before in other projects, some glues are solvents to some <clears throat> materials. Yeah, so you may not know right. uh, everything you want to know about your shoe. Like, you might know about right. your fabric. Okay, so keep that in mind. But definitely, when we cover a shoe, you have to glue. Okay, right. like you can't, you you probably. Well, I have sewn on two things like cross trainers, like a Nike tennis shoe yeah. or something. I have sewn things onto them. It's it's difficult. Yes. You know, it take, it, and sometimes I've used the combination of sewing and gluing. Right, right. You can sew part of it, but right. you're probably going to end up gluing somewhere. Right. On that. Absolutely. Um now, you covered a pair of, like, ballet flats for me. If once. I'm going to cover a pair of shoes uh-huh. with fabric, mm-hmm. with just whatever fabric, say, to match the dress or I want yeah. a certain look or whatever, the big trick there is do it on the bias. 
Uh huh. Okay. Because you can stretch it to the shape. Yeah. So basically, I take a big oval of fabric uh -huh. and start laying it on the shoe, mm -hmm. make sure that it fit. You know, I can start to slit it like, you know, yeah. um, around the top of the shoe or, and then I just cut it and start, you know, folding it over and folding it in. And when you get down to the, uh, um, sole, you're kind of just tucking it in, you're yeah. trimming and tucking it in and smoothing it. And that because it's on the, you know, you've got a good, good part of it on the bias, mm -hmm. which would be like, like at the toe, mainly the toe, right? The curve. toe of the, the toe foot, and the heel, where you have the most to cover, right? The, and the most because curve. the side of the shoe is kind of on the straightaway, right? And the toe yes. will have the most curve there, you know, yes. the side, like you said, the straight. The, the side is much more, uh, like I said, on the straightaway. So I have never had any trouble covering. Now I have had trouble with what the shoe was, like if it was like a patent leather uh -huh. or a vinyl. It was hard harder to take. You know, the glue might not. Right. Um, and, and maybe I had to futz with it a little more, whatever. And then I also want Wonder Clips or um, clothes pens or some sort of clip to clip around the right. edge of that shoe. Okay, you know. well, let's take a quick break and let's come back and talk a little bit more about covering shoes. Okay. Hello there, you fabulous sewing machine. Did you know that our podcasts and Facebook group are mostly funded by our fabulous members? We have corporate sponsors, but our individual members are the people who ensure that we can keep producing our quirky, inclusive, sometimes slightly offbeat sewing media. You can support the sewing media you love starting at $1.50 per month. As you go up the scale, you get perks like a universal wardrobe planner, the So Long and So Happy zine, access to patterns and discounted classes, and even a monthly live broadcast from Mallory and me. We are so thankful for our past, present, and future members. Any level of membership is helpful toward producing our podcasts, videos, and the time it takes to moderate our growing Facebook community. Go to SoHere.com slash membership to check it out. So, 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 sewing out loud. Okay, I wanted to bring up, you covered a pair of, like, ballet flats for me once. Are you talking um, about the brown ones? Yes, okay. exactly. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what I'm talking about. I know, the, where the fabric is even. We right, have, well, we just okay, used some of and it. And I already had that it's fabric. It's been on national television. I have had right? that. I, well, and it, I had that fabric for, like, 20 years before I covered your shoes. It must be, like, 40-year-old fabric. <laughs> you know, when I brought it to, to Iowa to use. Uh-huh. They made me cut the selvage off because it had the brand name on right. it. Right? Did it have but a year? Or the anything? woman, the woman was like, "Oh, this is such good fabric. That's such a good designer." Blah blah blah. I can't remember who yeah. it was, but anyway. Okay, so you covered these shoes. It was vintage. I, what I want to say is, if you're looking at a shoe and you're wondering right. how to cover it, the shoe will have seams. Okay. Yes. So a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, a ballet flap, they'll it'll have a seam at the back center mm -hmm. and then at the is that the arch or is it's that the, the arch? Is that the, the arch? Usually, <laughs> the, usually like oftentimes the inner arch. Yeah, so you can see, oh, this is made of two pattern pieces. Right, two pieces. And yes. it is probably a good idea mm -hmm. to follow that. You could do more pieces if you want to, but don't try and do all one, maybe. Uh, you well, can you can try. The ballet flat is easy to do one. Yes. Because it's such a low, shallow shoe. Yes. Yeah. But you know, take a right. cue though. Right. From oh, that. Absolutely. Yes. And then I want to talk about finishing edges on covered shoes. Okay. So you were talking about wonder clips and so right. I kinda like was like, oh let's take a break real quick. Okay. So if you've got that kind of inner, you know, from the back center to the arch, you know, that piece, and mm -hmm. then you have the other big piece. Right. Okay. So we don't have the specialty machines that allow us to sew into a shoe. Although, <laughs> I have sewn. Hold on. <laughs> I have sewn that edge. No, that's not what I was yeah. going to talk about. Go that oh, you, okay. mean, you mean the edge around, like the opening I mean, of the shoe? I mean, through the shoe, yeah. No, but what I right. was talking about, what I'm talking about is the seams between those. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, 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 no. So, like, tell me, Mom. Correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But I would glue my fabric to the smaller you know, quote, yes. pattern piece So that first. small piece that's uh -huh. on the inter... The inside. Goes to the in inside heel and yeah. arch. Glue that on first. Yes. And you really... I don't... I've never had to finish 
that yeah. piece that I put then over. So I, I lap Do it you, over. You don't turn it? That's what I, exactly I don't. what I'm asking. I don't. I lay it flat. I don't want the bulk. I'm better off. The seam's not going to show, probably. Yeah. Okay. If I make a nice, clean cut. And I'm and using so much freaking glue. The glue acts as it finishes. a seam seal. Yeah, right. It finishes okay? the fabric. And it's, it's not seam. And now... I don't know where you're going to wear these shoes or what you're going to do with them, but, you know, durability could be your question maybe. I don't know, but um, you can re-glue them too. And yeah. you probably have more fabric. You can, well, you can patch them up if you have and to. And I but. would glue and then trim, right? You glue, do you tuck well, down in between the sole and well, the upper part and then trim? Or do you, you know? Kind, yeah, well, I kind of glue and get down to that scene or mm -hmm. that that space and then i start cutting so i know exactly because i want enough to tuck in there right now i'm using tools too okay i'm using dental tools i'm using right craft <laughs> sticks i'm using um, no, that, okay. hemostats yeah, so you're talking about wonder clips we're right. talking about dental okay dental anything, tools are great it, dental yeah. anything that uh butter knife okay a spoon mm -hmm. the thing about a spoon like especially like a stainless steel type like tablespoon right. is you can do what I call burnish with it. Yeah. You can take the back of that spoon and smooth things out and your fingers don't always do that as well. Or the glue gets on your fingers and then you're getting it on every place else if it's coming through the fabric. So the back of the spoon is a nice trick. Yeah. So we are talking about distorting fabric. Yes. I mean, really here. Mm -hmm. I just want to be clear with everybody. Yes. And, you know, a lot of times leather shoes, they look so smooth uh -huh. and everything. And that's because you get that last, which is the mold for the shoe. You get the last. And you are also, you have, I don't know if they call it burnishing, but they stretch oh, yeah. and rub they and stretch, stretch and, and rub. And, and move it right. around. And they, you know, they get it wet. Right. And then they leave it on there so it shrinks into right. the shape. Which you is know. same is what, how they, you know, a lot of things we do where we form shapes we're wetting and drying and wetting and, like and the stretching the and hats, mess, right, right? Yeah, all of that pull, all of that pulling the hats. we are we are being the boss of the fabric That's right. or the material or whatever so you you are going to like you know, all the time we're talking about sending fabric through your machine right. and, like, not pulling on it. It's like, no, you're pulling it. You're gluing it to right. death. You're tucking it and in. And that's why <laughs> you're taking advantage of this bias. So yes. think about the bias line going across, like, the front of the shoe. Like an X. Right. The other thing is, is if this fabric has a obvious pattern, right? Yeah. Or, like, there's a big rose and a couple little roses and a big rose. Uh -huh. Or there's a big hunk of plaid and then tinier types of plaid or whatever you know however it goes right you need to look at those shoes and you need to probably cut mirror images that's a good idea unless you want your shoes to look uneven now that's a possibility too but what i'm saying is i should be able to look down and both of my roses more than likely will be say pointing inward or yeah. both pointing outward now the fabric might not always allow that right but come up with something that looks like it has some symmetry on each shoe um covering also can come in handy if you are wanting to change the shape of a shoe that's true okay too. so like if you get i'm i'm like thinking a high heel but i want to make it look like the high heels on fire yeah. okay and i want it to like i want to cut into the shoe to make you it look can like cut into the shoe are looking. right okay so you've cut into or your you shoe. can add on to it well sure right. i'm Right. I'm trying to come up with an idea here this whole time. <laughs> like, yeah. But this is also where covering can come in handy right. so that you can then finish off those That's edges, right. those you're raw edges. You're covering the, the that you've cut. right, you're covering, you know, the anastomosis there, there whatever you, go. you put it together. Okay, you've also, so wonder clips are great. Mm -hmm. okay, any kind of clip. Right, uh, anything to, you're going to have to turn it. the fabric hold, around the opening of the shoe. You will clip and turn, like say you do a curve on a collar yes. or something like that. Unless it's spandex, which is really nice, because if you cover with spandex, well, shoot, if you cover, it yeah, will just nice. go right in yeah. there. Sometimes <laughs> it's really nice, but um, that's not always what you want. It's not always what you're going to get. Whatever. Right. Um, and then a lot of times I have finished that part of the shoe off with a piece of bias, or what I really like is a flanged piece of. Uh, piping too and that's what and you'll you have did. like a piece of piping yes. going around so I, yeah i wanted to bring it's that really up cute. so mom did yeah. that on those brown shoes right. I don't, you know those 
okay, you right. did that for me like in middle school, so I'm sorry I do not have those anymore. Right. I'm pretty sure my feet grew uh, as well. Um, and they did. I wore them quite a bit, and they did start to wear, and some of the fabric started to come off after about, now, I don't know, like a year. Right. Now, you can do things like paint over them, yeah. like put a some sort of varnish or acrylic. Mm-hmm. You know, you you could do that. You could seal them. Yeah. So, but I I wanted to say, right. so you use the the piping to finish right. off the opening of the shoe there. So when you glue your fabric on, you're shaping it around, and you you curl it over, right, to finish that edge, and you clip it in place. Do you let it dry and then trim a little bit, or do you pretty much trim and then clip it in place? You know, trim clip the, what in place? Like like clip the edge of your fabric in place over the shoe do you leave any extra during the drying process or did, no, I, no i'm at a finish point you, so you like said, okay, i'm there you. i've glued all the way up to my opening and then i will start to clip uh, a little bit at a time and and roll and under place, roll under roll and then under. place the one oh man trim yeah. and clip are two words that right. can really mm-hmm. have different meanings i know we've talked about this so before. trim can be <laughs> like trimming with the scissors or it can mean adding decoration. Or adding the decor. Yeah, the decoration you want. And then clip. I know. All the time when I say clip when I'm sewing on yeah. live and stuff and I say, or oh, you could use the clips here. Now, if I'm saying clips and people get clips with that S on it, they know what I mean. But if they just hear clip, you know, or I say just clip instead of. Right, right. You know. Do you mean cut or do you mean put a water right, clip on there? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Ha <laughs> ha. Just that's fun. Okay, so uh, and they're even spelled the same, right? And so you turn that fabric over, you trim it, you you secure it in place with a uh, clip, right. okay? <laughs> and, and it depends. Some of it may glue down, and your glue may be fine, and your fabric may turn real easy, and yeah. you don't need a lot of clips, right? Which are things that hold it down, right? Um, wonder clips, or I'm using wonder. I, really, I, I hate to use wonder clips because it could be any clip. Yeah, you know, this is a place. Um, binder clips. Now, when you're clipping, too, you want to make sure that you don't leave clip marks. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, sometimes you may clip for a while uh-huh. in place and go back and look and make sure you're not getting little indentations you're worried about. Or if you want to put something in between your clip and your fabric, like right. a little piece of, you know, if you've got... But you have to make sure you're not gluing, gluing it. it on. That's yeah. right. Uh, but Which, on the- sometimes this is where, like, things like wax paper come yes. in handy. Yes, absolutely. Now, if you're going to put trim around that edge, you don't have to worry about it at all. Right. Depends on if the trim is, like, the piping didn't mm-hmm. go over anything. No, it just... But if I, maybe I was putting, like, some braiding or... Yeah, so piping... Or rhinestones. Piping or bias uh, going around that edge or... This is where you can incorporate like a little strip of leather. Absolutely. And if you have ever tried to cut, I know there, there's lots of different types of leather. Like I'm very aware of this. But if you've ever tried to cut a thin strip of leather, you know how difficult that can be sometimes. Mm-hmm. It starts to stretch on you. Yes, it leather is, is stretching. Leather, most of the time what you buy. Those cows, man, they need you that know, stretch. They need, know. Yeah, I'm sure I would be stretchy too if someone right. made leather out of me. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's getting into a different podcast. But anyway, so you you are going to run into that stretchiness um, if you try to cut a, str- a thin strip of leather. But the flanged piping is so great. Oh, it, it, looks, finished. it looks nice, right? It, it's, it, you use a really small one. It was a tiny bitty one. Bitty bitty. Did I make it or did I, we I have it, I wonder? I think that was ready made. Okay. Uh, but I don't know. Do you remember I what could, color it was? It was gold because oh, the, okay. the shoes were this... You know, variegated brown right. swirly fabric mm-hmm. with uh, actually black right. like lines on yes. it, and then there's actually like a a scene in the movie Fantasia or where you think that's in there? I feel like it looks like that, that fabric. Okay, yeah. um, anyway, that happens so, to me all the time. Oh, that, that looks, looks like, like a that. certain fabric. Yeah. Uh, and so anyway, and then it was this gold sparkly piping. But mm-hmm. once again, it's not like mom turned it back. Like we break the rules of sewing here. We're not always. Mm-hmm. This going. is where you need to know the rules of sewing, right. so they can be broken. All right, again, you need to know what bias and how bias works. The other thing is when I'm clipping around there like that, I don't worry about fraying because most of that's on the glue. clips lined up on the also on glue. the bias and it's glue. And you know, once they're in place, they're going to stay there. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, um, we, yeah, that. 
the other thing is, this is a lot of trial and error. Yeah. It's never the same. You're always going to work with a different but, shoe. And this okay? is something where I, when, if anyone is threatened by this, don't. Because yeah. just try. Right. Just try. You can always rip it I off. I mean. Right? Yeah. <laughs> You always spray paint well, it. Well, I guess, yeah, I, I, think about, I think about, it's funny, I think about the days of when I started doing stuff like this, and there was no internet available right. to me. There was an internet, it wasn't available. Of course, there wasn't any information on it either, but. Um, People that weren't prioritizing I didn't shoe get to go look, tutorials. I didn't go, get to go Google, you know, or Bing or whatever and say, how would you cover shoes? No one uses Bing. I don't. No, no. one uses Okay, Bing. good. Um <laughs> So, you know, I didn't get to go do that where at least I got a starting place. I had to figure out my own starting place. Right, right. Or go to the library, and the library is just like Google. You go to the library, you go down that black hole, and all of a sudden you're bringing home a book to do everything, right. including building an igloo in the middle of the summer in the Midwest or something. Because you're like, oh, this is interesting, this is interesting, this is interesting. So, um, well, I guess what I'm saying is don't get afraid. Yeah, I, you know, I don't agree. and don't and if you don't have dental tools, go into your kitchen. Or I'll tell you what, kids play doh tools. Oh yeah, stuff like no, that. Zelda just Some got stuff. Uh, you know, Some air dry clay. Yeah, and it came with the coolest tools. I know. I was like, I want Our those. sharp, you know, sharpened. Um, does everybody like me pick up an extra set of chopsticks when they buy sushi oh, yeah. at the grocery you store go. you know you can put those in the pencil sharpener there's all kinds of things you can do and, yes. all, and make your own tools oh, putting them in the pencil sharpener oh so smart. we never talked about that before no. there's a whole bunch you've around never, you. you just never noticed you've never it. told me about that, tell her that in the last 30 years <laughs> uh but you know a spoon like implement is is nice yes. yeah something something like that spoons are good this is also something where people be like well can you do a podcast on covering shoes or whatever and i'm i feel bad that we can't cover every eventuality well i sometimes. guess the thing is, is but we can't well i i think the right the other thing is is yes we can do a podcast on covering shoes can we tell you everything we know can we can relate every single experience. What you know? Yeah. Probably not. It I'm was, trying to that, think. That's a process. It goes I'm, on and on. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a um, a fabric that maybe wouldn't be good for this. And what I'm thinking. Well, like I don't know if I'd cover a shoe with tulle, but I did well, cover one with silk organza. Yeah, you did. That's exact. I think that fabric that might not work for this are bonded fabrics with an inflexible backing okay like yes if you didn't have any stretch any, at all like if they if, were too stable if it's a fabric mm -hmm. now i say a bonded fabric right. felt a bonded fabric and felt would be a great thing to cover a shoe with right. because generally it, it is flexible it is flexible. but i'm looking at cork over right. there might not be the most flexible it depends, though. There are cork shoes. Oh, of course there but are. But I don't know how they do that. You just need, but right. you need more flex, you need more right. seams, maybe. Maybe or, they're getting it or, wet. It, right. You know? Or if you, or if you, for some reason, want cork or there's, I mean, you can use those things for embellishments, too. Yeah. So you can take a strip of cork and strap it over the well, shoe. Okay. Things then, like that, if that is something you, here's you're a, trying to match or incorporate or whatever. Yes. And then, of course, I'm kind of thinking along the lines of, like, covering a ballet flat but like mm -hmm. those you know espadrille kits that you can yes. make at home i think the cork would work for that just because right. it's such a simple pattern that's piece. right so once again no hard and fast rule right. there i think that fur would be super fun also super forgiving you're not working with that right. hard edge that is where you can get into like monster stuff right. i actually i think well it's it's a little early to be talking about this but Zelda is obsessed with Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, so we might be doing that. And so there's Spider-Woman. And now Zelda, she has the car. Zelda yeah. likes to call her Spider-Yeah, I know. We could just write it down the... Uh, spy, but she calls her Spider-Girl. Anyway, it's Gwen Stacy, and she has uh, green, like, teal ballet shoes on in her Spider costume. 
And no, and it's like the perfect. If she wants to I be want this, those. no, if she yep. wants to be this, it's perfect because it's black leggings. It's a black and white raglan shirt with a hood. Like it would be the coolest costume right. to make. Anyway, so I hope I hope she uh, sticks with this. But so we'll, ballets, we'll leather ballets. So I was thinking about these teal ballets, and we've got that teal mm-hmm. knit over there, and that would be so perfect. And I would probably though, since it's Halloween and sometimes it can be very cold, I might go buy her a pair of black shoes, right, and put it over it, and even yeah. not. Cover the whole shoe, but just give it that ballet flat that look, ballet it's, and it's got somehow. ribbons up the calf, right. you know, like a point shoe almost. Right. Uh, so that is another option. So you know, keeping the, an, I might be keeping a lookout for something like that as I go shopping, you know. So we're hitting on ballets here. Sure. So I don't want. I I would be remiss in not speaking up about ballet shoes. So speak up. I have <laughs> dyed many a ballet shoe. Yeah, you I, want a purple ballet shoe? You want a blue ballet shoe? You want. A green ballet shoe, uh, they die. They die with writ dye. That's all I've ever used. That's, you know, commercial, multi-purpose dye. You put them in the water and you let them soak and they die. Okay, I guess there's a bunch of people on the internet telling people that, like, you cannot dye polyester or you cannot dye I know, I, I leather. Know. You can't. Okay, so <laughs> you can dye anything. <laughs> And some things might not take on dye. Okay, I have dyed furniture. Yeah, you, I mean. Okay, yeah. I have taken <laughs> dye and stained furniture with it, like writ dye yeah. and stained furniture with it. It was blue, everybody. I wanted blue furniture. I got blue furniture. I, I stained. So I did my room when I was a teenager. I had blue furniture. So anyway, dye imparts color, okay? It doesn't hold on to it. It, it imparts. Right. So. Here's the deal. If I take a piece of polyester, I take a piece of cotton, I take a piece of silk, I take... So I t- I've taken four or five different types of fabric, right. and I put them in my writ dye. And why I'm saying writ dye is because writ dye has more than one type of dye. Right. Okay? It is meant to... It is a multi-purpose dye. Here's what's going to happen. I put them in the same solution for the same amount of time. I treat them exactly the, the same. They will not come out the same color. Yeah, and we've okay. covered that. I mean, I, so, yeah. I, so I, I just don't want anybody to be, be hesitant. You, now, you right. can also dye with a Sharpie and some alcohol. Yes. Okay? Yes. There's all kinds of, you can dye with a beet. Okay? <laughs> Avocados. <laughs> yes. Make things pink. Did you know that? Yeah. Light pink. Um, blueberries. What, avocado pits. Blueberries too. make things funny colors. Okay, so anyway. anyway. You can't, yeah, you can totally dye shoes. Yes. Go to town. But now, the other thing that we have done with ballets, and I don't know if Mallory remembers this, but your sister went away. Did you put it in pencil sharpener? <laughs> no, I didn't do that. <laughs> but just look at everything as a tool. You never know what can be I a put tool. The ballet shoe in the pencil Something sharpener. can be a tool. <laughs> Well, hmm? you may, you, I know. You I, and Bella, your, your sister's ballets for yeah, her wedding. I know. And you actually sewed through the leather and sewed beads on them. Were they leather? Yeah. They weren't leather. Yeah, they, they were fabric, were, weren't they? No, they were leather. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Uh, that's they the were one, white leather. The one last tool I wanted to talk about mm-hmm. was hemostats. So we've been talking about glue and clips. I thought I tried to mention you, those you in did, there. You okay. did, but I want to say right. hemostats can be good if you do want to sew through. Yes, the because you shoot. use them as a needle holder, which they are also used for in called that. There are things called needle holders that look just like hemostats. Okay, basically. so what I'm what I'm they saying have the you do nose usually. Okay, mm-hmm. is you you put the needle into the hemostat, you hold it, and you use it to puncture the shoe. Right. Okay. Then you release, and then, and you, then you use it to pull, pull it through, through the right. shoe mm-hmm. because your hands, if you like. Sometime. Either you won't be able to do it or you'll ruin it. Or them. you'll hurt your hands. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. So that's how you use the hemostats. Right. If you're going to apply now, beads. Fab- there are shoes that are already something. covered with fabric. Uh-huh. And I, I don't know if you remember the shoes that I covered for Lindsay for her prom dress. Yeah, because so. I beaded those. Uh-huh. You did. With I the hemostat. Yeah. Okay. And the need- no, I So think, we or I picked up some of them. just the fabric. We didn't have yeah. to go through whatever the the man-made material yes. was. They use- so... I covered part of them in fabric. They were strappy sandals. So some of the straps were covered in the fabric of the dress. Some of them were not. But then we did also add some beading. Right. Um, and we just picked up the fabric part to bead. We Maybe didn't go I didn't through. Bead I those. think I did them. Okay. I thought I, I feel like I have beaded a shoe, though, like that. Um, so well, I don't no know. Doubt. I don't know what it was I, for. I believe that. Uh-uh. <laughs> the other thing you can do is you can glitter shoes. Okay, which is you slather on your your uh, 
glue. Glue, and then you roll them in the glitter. And you can glitter the bottom of the shoe. Boop, boop. Or you can paint the bottom. Especially, you know, when they're heels. Yeah. You can see the bottom of the shoe. So yeah. you can decorate the You underneath. can Louboutin your you, own you can, shoes. You, you can. absolutely can. So, okay, if you're going to paint some shoes, let's mm-hmm. pretend you want to paint some shoes. Like you want to paint the Now bottoms. I want to go like paint shoes. I know. I'm getting really, yeah. I'm like, let's go get some shoes. I haven't really bought shoes in a long time. Yeah. Uh, okay. You though, if you want to paint like the hard plastic bottom of the shoes, it's a good idea to rough them up. Rough them up, just like uh-huh. with any other a little furniture. Sandpaper, right? Yeah, get a little fine sandpaper, rough those up, paint them red. Also, Everybody if you're trying to cover a shoes. vinyl shoe or a patent uh-huh. leather type shoe, anything that seems a little slick, rough that go up. Go ahead and see if you want to rough it up a little bit. It might Here, work better. How much does a Louboutin shoe cost? Cost? Oh, I have no idea. Because like Derek's. Guess what? I don't have to know. Oh, Derek, are you going to a wedding where they're going to be worn? No, oh. I was at a wedding where they were worn, and I was like, "That's yeah, twelve hundred dollars." I said fifteen, so yeah. I was wrong. Um, but ZD and I can tell you that you just need some sandpaper and some red paint. <laughs> we were watching something. My husband and I cannot remember. It was something about you know a a, a handbag, a pocketbook, a handbag, yeah. right, a purse, and. He laughed. He said, well, that, th-. you know, I said, oh, no. What did they he can say? Be- you didn't finish your sentence. I can't Was remember he what he said. talking about the price? He said okay. something, yeah, like the, the line in the movie or the story or whatever it was. Bag. I can hawk this, oh, you know, that much. And, and get yeah. by a car or mm-hmm. something. I can't remember what it was. And he's like, oh, that's real. I go, no. no. I go, I'm telling you, she can hawk that for like $25,000. Mm-hmm. So I did, I looked it up and I showed, he goes, Really? I go, really? Branding. Yes, yes. Branding. There you go. <laughs> Buy yourself a purse for $30,000. <laughs> hey, if it makes you happy and no one's going hungry in your I family, guess. I mean. I don't know. You know. Yeah. Uh, okay. If it makes sense to you. Well, you know what? I, did? You, I just want to say this. I listened to some podcasters, and they, like, have a Patreon page, like our right. membership, you know, but they have a Patreon page, and she's they're like, it's just to cover the podcast costs. You know, it's not like we're buying a Lamborghini. And I thought, I hope that so many people like you that you can buy a Lamborghini. <laughs> like, I don't care if you buy a Lamborghini. I don't know. I mean, it's not like they said, everyone, please give us $400,000. For nothing. <laughs> yeah, for doing they, nothing for you. Right. They have, like, membership levels well, like we do. And I thought, well, what if, like, a million people liked you and you wanted to buy a Lamborghini? Like, don't minimize, especially women, you know, I feel like. Well, she has that. given her time and devoted it to yeah, that podcast. Like- and then she is passing it to you. I don't see any problem um, with yeah. giving her some money. Yeah, you right. Can, you can have a Lamborghini, and I don't care. I mean, you know. No, after you yeah, give the money, money to them, yeah. it's up to them what they want yes. to do with it. So, so anyway, um, I would be really happy if they got a Lamborghini if that's what they want. So, how long have we been talking about? Just shoes? forty minutes, not too bad. Ooh. Okay, but I think this has been good. There, okay, there are like you said, lots of glues. Mm-hmm. A spray glue can be nice because it gives a very even application. That's true too. And I will tell you, there's some neat spray paints out there. So Spray glues or spray paints? I'm talking about the, spray paints, okay, okay, too, right, that it. have glitter yeah, in them. Yes, yes. And have, uh, are they, they pock. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? They make little marks and, and stuff. And this is where wax paper can come in handy. You can line the shoe. So what you have to do is you need to shoe. stuff the shoe stuff so the shoe, you're not yeah. spraying the inside of the shoe. Um, the reason being... It can make it stiffer and or if you put your foot in there and the foot sweats or something, the yeah. paint will start to flake nah. off on your foot. No good. I mean, you really don't want the paint in the shoe. Yeah. Um, but there are some rad. There's also glow in the dark paint. Uh, I know. So. I know. So. I know. There you go. And okay. Mallory's really into glow I'm in the into dark glo- paint. I'm into glow in the dark paint. I'm into it. And that is another thing when you go to after you. So after you put this fabric or whatever you do to cover this shoe. Any kind of embellishment you can think up that you can make stay on, right? It it, it include it. Yes. It's there. Okay. It's well, fair fair game. I I think I just wanted to bring that up. And and of course, if you're doing all this spraying and stuff, you could do it outside, or you need to line your space with like newspaper, or do mm-hmm. it inside a box, or something like that. But I will say, you've been using some of that real strong glue for your aerial costumes, mm-hmm. and some of it got on the floor and. Uh, you know, now you we have see, a laminate we floor. We have a laminate floor. Okay. So I would not say, like, if my floor was carpet, it would be a good idea right. that some of it got on there. But some of it got on our, like, laminate floor. Right. Uh, actually, a piece of paper got stuck to it. 
And I just sprayed Windex on it, left it for like three minutes, right? Wiped up with a paper towel, and all of that came up. So I it's, would, it's I would cool. suggest nice. honestly to anyone if they have a craft space or a sewing space and they plan on doing stuff like we do. The laminate floor has proven itself it is a over very, and now. Yeah. It can get slick. It can get slick. If okay, got, especially if it gets yes. dusty. It's like, yes. <laughs> but, or you put a piece of tool. Uh, a right. piece of tool. Piece of fabric that you stand on and slide. Yeah, it's the, like, yeah, the yes. tool I've I've flown across but the floor before. As far as cleaning, oh my gosh, it's been a godsend. It is. And been nice. I mean, you know. We, I've gotten paint on it that all I've done is like chipped up with you know my fingernail right, and things right. like that. No, that was... it. I have re- I would endorse a laminate floor. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe we need to contact somebody for the yeah. podcast sponsorship. Okay. okay. Well, thank you all for listening. Um, we'll post some pictures of some shoes we've covered, and we hope that you tell us about any shoes that you have covered. You can find us on Instagram. Or made. Yeah, or made. You can find us on Instagram at so here Com ZD. Take it away. So long and so happy. Thanks for listening to Sewing Out Loud. For even more expert sewing advice, visit SewHere.com. So